Hello everyone, Victor is here, your organic chemistry tutor, and today I have a fun brain teaser for you. Suppose we have the following two molecules, one naphthol and two naphthol. Now, my question is, do these molecules have comparable PKA values or is one of them more acidic than the other one? An unsophisticated chemistry student might think there is no difference, uh, these two molecules are extremely similar to each other and their structure, so there shouldn't be any difference. A more curious student might look up the pKa values just to confirm their suspicion. Well, let's be curious as well. Let's check out the pKa values ourselves and see for ourselves too. If we check the pKa values for those two, we'll see that they're not quite the same. According to the Boardwell's table, the pKa values for 1 and 2 naphthol are 16.2 and 17.2 in DMSO correspondingly. The fact that the pKa values were measured in DMSO rather than in water as usual is not very relevant for our purposes. While the numbers themselves would of course be different from those measured in water, the trends in acidity they do not change based on the solvent for as long as the solvent is chemically neutral. And DMSO is a very common standard for the pKa measurements for specifically those compounds that do not easily dissolve in water. Water, and naphthols, they don't dissolve in water very well. So, is one unit on the pKa scale a significant difference? Yes, it is. The pKa scale is logarithmic, which means that a single unit in the pKa scale equals to the order of magnitude difference in the Ka scale. In other words, one naphthol is 10 times more acidic than two naphthol. So why such a drastic difference? Why two seemingly similarly looking molecules have a significant difference in the pKa values? Well, to answer that, we'll need to do our usual factor analysis where we rip off the acidic proton from our molecule and look at the differences in the resonance, atomic size, electronegativity, the induction effects, and finally hybridization. So first thing first, let's draw our conjugate basis. Here we go. Now, to go down my laundry list of our factors, I first need to show all of my resonance structures, because I have quite a few in each case. If you are drawing your structures along with me, and I sure hope you are, you should be seeing five additional resonance structures for one naphthol, and similarly, you should get five additional resonance structures for the conjugate base we get from our two naphthol. And that's where we are going to have a bit of a problem. You see, from the perspective of the resonance, we are going to have the same number of structures and all of those structures that we just drew here, they are minor contributors. The charges, they are also going to be located on either oxygen for the major contributor, which is the original structure, or the carbons, which is our rest of our structures. For the same reason, there is no difference between the electronegativity or induction or hybridization in this case. And yet, we are still seeing the different pKa values. What the heck? Well, the trick is... I intentionally misled you in the analysis only using the superficial approach that is typically sufficient for the most problems that you are going to see in your class. In fact, the resonance structures that we have for those conjugate bases are not actually the same. Upon closer inspection, we can see that we have two fully aromatic resonance contributors in the case of one naphthol, and only one fully aromatic contributor for the conjugate base coming from the uh, two naphthol. This is a significant enough difference in the overall stability of the resonance hybrid, which translates into the meaningful difference in the pKa values between the, our molecules. And we remember that the more stable the conjugate base is, the more acidic the original molecule is going to be. So by having a more stable conjugate base for one naphthol means that that molecule is going to be more acidic. If you need a refresher on what is aromatic and what is not, by the way, I'll leave the video link in the description below. But take-home message here is to be very careful with your analysis and not draw hasty conclusions. Often, the differences may not be readily apparent, especially when you are dealing with the molecules that are very similar to each other in structure. Now, if this was a question on your test, would you have known how to answer it, or would you be utterly lost? Let me know in the comments below. 
Thank you for joining me today and watching this video till the very end. If you learned something new today, you can show it to me by hitting the like button and leaving me a comment to help promote this video and help more students see it. Subscribe to the channel for daily organic chemistry updates, watch this video next, and I will see you tomorrow.